Sarah says this town that used to live on the coast, by the way, if it's a coastal town, then you can already imagine, use your minds, their economy depends on the sea. They're fishermen, right? They, they do trade or coast, you know, ships embark on their, on, their, on their docks and they do trade with them, you know, or they go out and, you know, get their food from the ocean. So that's already understood. And Allah says they used to violate in the matter of the Sabbath, meaning they carried on doing their business even when Allah told them not to on Saturdays. This was the time where they're not supposed to do it, but they would do it. And why would they do so? Why would they violate the Sabbath? They have six other days to earn their, their income or you know, fish for, you know, for their fish. So he says, When on the day of Saturday, when it's haram for them to go, impermissible for them to go fishing, Shurra actually suggests that the fish would actually come to them. They don't have to go to the fish. The fish are coming to them, blinking at them. Hey, you want to catch me? It's easy catch today. And they're jumping up and down. They're doing like flips in the air. Like, man, this today is easy catch. On Saturdays, the fish would come out like it's a festival. And other days, uh, you know, يَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِي And the days that they don't have Saturday, the fish don't come easy. They don't come to them. So they noticed, even though they can get, it's not like they had no fish to catch. They could still catch, but it wasn't easy. But on Saturdays, it was super easy. It would come to them. It would run toward, the fish would run towards them. Right? And so, and these are Muslims, by the way. They're Muslims. Now imagine, just to, by, by analogy, so you can, it's closer to your and my context. Imagine that you run a store. Right? You have a store. And you get no customers. You get like two customers a day. Most of the time you're sitting there, you know, playing like, you know, Crossy Road or something on your phone and you're doing nothing. No customers show up. And then it's like 1 o'clock and you are 1.15, 1.15 you leave your store and you head towards the masjid. By 1.45 the prayer is going to start and you're going to be back by 3 o'clock. But every single week, 12.45, 30, 40, 50 customers start just coming through the door. And they're buying everything, stuff you're trying to sell for six months, nobody's touched it. They're putting everything in the cart and they're buying, buying, buying. And then Friday prayer is getting late. And then you say, no, 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 you can't buy right now. Oh yeah, forget it, I won't buy it now. And then they just, and you don't see them again. Until next Friday, right exactly for the time of the prayer. Other than that, you get maybe 10% sales. 90% of the sales happen right as Friday prayer is coming. Right? So it's pretty tempting to, I mean, come on, it's, I'll still catch two rakahs. Or, it's not that haram, is it? Just one Friday. It's not like I'll become a non-Muslim. It's not so bad. So you start making calculations in your head, what's a bigger loss? Missing the prayer or missing all these customers? So this happens to these people over and over again, and eventually they start getting in the habit of violating the Saturday. They saw it enough times come in their face, probably not the first time they saw the fish come out and they said, yeah, I don't care about Saturday. I don't care about the Sabbath. It didn't happen like that. It's a slow but regular <laughs> temptation because it's hitting you every Friday, right? It's our, in their case every Saturday. So eventually they caved and it became a normal thing for them. It became a normal thing for them to violate the Sabbath. And so Allah says about these people that started violating the Sabbath, كَذَلِكَ نَبْلُوهُمْ That is how we tested them. بِمَكَانُ يَفْسُقُونَ Because of other corruptions they were engaged in. Now this is the clue Allah is giving us. Why did Allah test them in that way? When Allah sees that one kind of corruption comes out in a person, one kind of sin they don't care about, then Allah opens doors to other sins, and He makes those other sins just right accessible to them. And He wants to see, are you actually remorseful for the other smaller deeds, the other corruptions that you're engaged in? Are you, you want to walk away from them? Or do you want, if other doors were open to other corruption, you do that too? You would do that, you take that also, you jump at it too. And Allah says, this is how we tested them because of the corruption they used to engage in. Meaning these kinds of tests sometimes come to people that, in, that dabble in sin, that engage in corruption, and they don't walk back from it. As well, anybody can make a mistake. When you make a mistake, you make tawbah, you walk back. But if you refuse to walk back, and you keep being corrupt and corrupt and corrupt and corrupt, then Allah opens doors to even worse haram for you. Now why would Allah do that? Allah does that in other places He describes that, إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ like Allah extends their rope for them so they can earn even more sins. I always give the same analogy when I describe this principle of the Quran. When Allah allows people to keep going, He keeps extending them in their rebellion. The, the, the analogy my teacher gave me is still stuck in my head. He gave the analogy of a dog. If you have a dog on a leash that's one foot long, 
the dog wants to run, it can't because the, the leash keeps tugging at him, right? So what the, what the owner does to punish the dog, instead of giving him a one-foot leash, he gives him a 200-foot leash. It's still a leash, it's still tied to the tree, and the dog thinks it's free for 199 feet. Until he hits the 200th foot, what happens to him? He gets choked so hard because he was running so fast, you understand? So the one-foot leash was actually safer for the dog. The 200-foot leash actually kills him, destroys him. You want to rebel? Go ahead. You think you don't have a leash on you? Go ahead and run. See how far you go. And the further you go, the harder the choke, choke will be at the end. That's the, that's the idea. Allah says, you want this? Then I'll give you, you know? نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى Quran says, we'll turn him in the direction he turns into. You want to turn in a certain direction? Okay. I'll open up all the doors, that you, the, the road you want to take. Allah will not stop you from taking a road. As a matter of fact, someone wants to take the right road, Allah will open more doors for them in the right direction. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Somebody wants to take the wrong road, Allah will open more doors than the more wrong and more wrong. Go ahead, take it, take it, take it. He's not making you do it, He's giving you the choice. You can walk away from any of them at any point. But the other important thing before we get to the next ayah, and maybe we won't get to it today, maybe in the next week I'll, I'll, I'll cover this more you know, in depth, the, the response and what happens in this story. But today what I wanted to highlight is a kind of test that you and I have to be ready for from Allah Azza wa And what's that test? That test is that the halal, the right way, may seem like it requires more work. It requires more effort. It's not as convenient. And the wrong way, is actually wide open and extremely tempting and super convenient and effortless. Where the good, the benefit that you're seeking from the halal, the, the haram way, you have to, you, the, if you do the right thing, you have to make a lot of effort for it to, you don't have to, it won't come to you, you have to go to it. But the haram, you don't even have to go to it, it's coming to you, like the fish are coming to you, right? You don't have to go to them, they're coming to you. تَأْتِيهِمْ حِتَانُهُمْ شُرَّعًا so when something is wrong, sometimes Allah will have that, the test to you and me will be, it'll be knocking on your door. Hey, you don't have to come pursue me, I'll pursue you. The fish is saying, come hunt me. <laughs> you know, you don't have to catch me, I'll come to you. I'll jump right in your basket, you know. So this, this idea is a very powerful one. We have to look out for this test because are we people that run after convenience? And as a result of lucky, looking for convenience or quickly fulfilling what we desire, whether it's money or lust or anything else, whatever we desire. There's a halal road to take and that road may be difficult and there's a haram road to take and that's super convenient and extremely tempting. And it whets the appetite and someone says, I should just go for that, it's so much easier. Why am I making things hard on myself? Why even put myself through that difficulty? This is how Allah tests not disbelievers. Remind yourself, this is how Allah tests a believing community. These were a believing community. They believed in revelation. This is them.